So to start using the entity framework, we of course need to have the huge package that the entity framework is. We need to have that um, file and we can install the entity framework using the NuGet package management system. And since we just touched this once, let's just try again to use the NuGet package management system to actually download a new project. And it's it's fairly simple. So let's go into our data logic layer, the person application data logic layer, layer here and right click the references out here. That's how you go in and figure out what NuGet package you already have installed. And I'll go in here and I'll say, oh, my, that's another thing. The menu will change depending on if your application is running or not. So the menu won't pop up until it stop my application. And then I can actually right click here and now the NuGet package manager will pop up here. Manage NuGet packages, I'll click that one. And I already installed the NC framework on my machine. But if you go on the browse right here, the NC framework will actually pop up right here. I have to also tell you this, if you start writing like NTT, it might not pop up actually, because it's not that good at actually browsing <laughs> the packages. Let me try and write entity like this instead. Now you'll see it's not even the top one yet. So let me try and write entity framework like this. There it came up. So you have to be very precise if you want to search the entity framework. And that it's all around for the NuGet package management system. You have to be pretty precise if you want to actually find something in here. But I already installed it just by clicking here and saying install right here. Okay, so that's how you install the NC framework. Now that is installed and we are kind of ready to use the system. Uh, besides that, they ask that you have to use the Visual Studio. You have to, of course, have that installed. You have to use Visual Studio at some point. And, and we already have that. So let's jump to the next part of this lesson where we'll actually try and set up our first very basic code first example. And uh, this is actually the example that they start out with. And it's just a student and a standard and a student can have a standard. So that's kind of the coupling between the two. A student has a standard and this is how a standard looks. This is how a student looks. We have a student ID and we have a standard ID, right? So that's, that's the setup. Let's go down because this is actually where we start to have, where we, where we can find some code that is relevant for us because we need to make a context. And think of the context. If we go back one image here, the context, that's kind of the glue right here that binds these two guys together. The context tells the tables, uh, sorry, the database, how the table should look, and it tells the code how the database looks. So that's kind of how these two work together by adding a context in the middle. So we're going to make our first context now. Let's, um, I'm just going to copy the code from in here, and then I'll paste it inside my code in a new class. So I'll right click the folder here that I created called context. It's just a new folder called context, no rocket science there. I'll do add and I'll say a new class. It's just a basic class. I'll call it um, person app context, just to give it a name. And now I get this beautiful class right here. It has to be public, so let me just do that right away. And then I'll just paste in the stuff, stuff I just copied. You'll notice that the first thing we need to do is inherit we need to extend the superclass called DB context from the NC framework. So I'll do that. Now the next thing I need to do is create, well, this is not something you have to do right away. You don't actually don't have to, but let's just add a default constructor here that uses the base constructor. So it uses its superclass constructor right here. Cause later on we'll start seeding the database and add stuff in here. So I'll just add that. And then this is actually the really important part. So let me just, grab this guy right here and paste it in so I can explain it to you guys. Because here we have something very important and that's actually a DB set that actually represents a table, right? So if I go back to the drawing we had, let me just try and jump into the drawing here, um, up here. A DB set actually represents a single table inside our database, right? So the DB set knows that if I have a DB set, I should also have a table available. That's part of the truth. So that's why we want to add a DB set for every entity or every business entity we have available. So let's just start out by making one called persons, where it contains a list of all the persons available. So let me uh, go in here and implement that persons. So now we know we are going to have a table called persons. What else should we have? We should also have a table called person status, where we can have all our person statuses. There, it helps me autocomplete. And then we need another table here called the new guy that I just add, added called a wish. And that's going to be called wishes. And that's pretty much all I have to do configuration wise 
to get my entity framework up and running. I'll save this and I'm pretty much done. The configuration is now ready to use and then the next lesson we'll try and add a manager that actually can start using this new uh, database setup that we just built. See you in the next lesson.